हेलो एंड वेलकम टू एन टी वी प्रॉफिट विद मी इज पी बी बालाजी हु इज़ ग्रुप सी एफ ओ एट टाटा मोटर्स मिस्टर बालाजी थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर जॉइनिंग एज एन टी वी प्रॉफिट यू नो दिस इज़ अ फर्स्ट इंट्रैक्शन आफ्टर द डी मर्जन अनाउंसमेंट गिव इज़ अ सेंस ऑफ वॉट वेन थ्रू दैट अनाउंसमेंट बिकॉज यू ट्राइंग टू डी मर्ज योर सी वी बिजनेस सेपरेटली एंड योर पी वी एंड इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल सेपरेटली सी द you need to see it as a logical culmination of the interventions we've been making over the last few years first we are saying each business has to be self sustaining then we said they have to have their own strategies to deal with winning in their respective marketplaces then we started simplifying the capital structures where we cleaned out the adrs then we had a scheme for the dvrs we got some whopping shareholder approvals so that because that's a problem that has been uh, ruminating for a while now in terms of uh, what to do with the dvr shareholders because the asset class asset has lost its charm so we had to solve for that and once that got simplified then you had to ensure that the business is debt free because you can't be demerging with debt then how will the business stand up on its own so we made that debt free this then becomes a logical end point in terms of uh, what do you do with the businesses why businesses are pretty large this business is now almost 4.2 lakh crores 42 billion dollars for 40 billion pounds kind of a business 50 billion dollars that's very large in that if you look at just the commercial vehicle business is a 10 billion dollar business 80000 crores and look at the passenger vehicle which is very very small it's only about 10000 crores if you go back in 2020 is now almost a 50000 crores business mm, yeah. with that kind of uh, scale coming through you need to respect each of these businesses for in terms of the opportunity that they provide so by giving them the and we, have, we as part of the pv subsidization we already split the teams because we knew this was coming down the tracks in any case and therefore when we when now with this we are able to now see very clearly the opportunities in each of the sub segment where granular focus is very very important the board is able to then will be able to then provide sufficient time for that business which today it'll have to in its time it'll have to do all the businesses together this gives it more time and also at the same time the customers wherever benefits are there we can secure there are very limited synergies between cv and pv going forward because the the way the cafe norms are evolving the way technology is evolving the road map that they'll have to take is going to be very very different so to overload that with on to pv over it is not fair and vice versa it's going to be more software intensive it's going to be more features led so that the what the pv guys will be focusing on important to tease that out and then as more and more as we become euro 7 uh, sorry uh, we are sitting in uh, bs6 phase 2 moving toward and there it's going to euro 7 the, the emission norms are coming together add electrification it's actually the same so we will have we will be the, will be the only manufacturer in the world who will have a tiago ev at one end and a range rover electric at the other end so there are so many ways in which we can come together take batteries agritas is now going to supply both jlr and uh, pv uh, ev at the same time we are sharing platforms between jlr and here so the synergies are becoming bigger and bigger in this space so leverage the synergies wherever the synergies are there take them out give them focus agility that is the purpose what was the there was an argument that you know the cyclicality of the business uh, between cv and pv these two you know uh, map each other in case of a down cycle in either of either of them uh, are you you know opening up that cyclicality to the cv business thanks for asking this question somebody had to ask this question you look at the cv business it's eight verticals we are very very clear we will reduce volatility of the profits and volatility of the cash flows in the case of cv by managing it within cv why today every aspect the uh, the heavy commercials the intermediate light we are one of the few manufacturers in the world who go from a 500 kg payload to 55 ton payload the the hcv part of the business is intensely cyclical ilcv lesser so SCV even less so, buses even less so. So if these guys start stepping up the profitability, your volatility goes down. One. Second, you're looking at international business. That is not necessarily that moves to a different cycle to this. So yeah. it can be countercyclical at times. At the same time, we are seeing more vehicle park solutions coming in. Smart mobility is one. Non-vehicular business spares is one. Earlier spares was a small portion, but as more and more vehicles become more sophisticated, spares volumes go up because you want genuine spares because the vehicle is too expensive to play around with. then you add the whole digital piece that we are looking at add smart mobility these are vehicle park solutions and you are the largest market player in the in the market today so your vehicle park will be even bigger than everybody else that will ensure that the revenues from that will start becoming steadier so our intention is to see dramatically reduce volatility of the results coming out of the cv business so that at an overall level between revenue to the, to uh, profit you need to be much less volatile much more the demerger gives us the opportunity to demonstrate that 
So I'm not looking at CV cyclicality being compensated by PV. I'm actually saying CV cyclic, HCV cyclicality being compensated by revenues from vehicle park and the remaining businesses that are out there, which means I can discover better value out of CV. That is the whole purpose of the CV side of the piece there. At the same time, focus, agility, and everything else we talked about. So you're trying to turn the tables around on people who argue that you know the valuation for CVs are much lower uh, compared to a PV business, uh, and you're saying that P CV will have a much bigger cash flow, uh, and so it should be valued in a different metrics, right? Absolutely correct. Because CV today, take the ROCI of CV business. It's 36 percent last year. That's a very strong ROCI. We got a very very strong brand. We got market share positions that have been challenged many, many years, but it's seriously robust market share position. The only thing I'll need to crack is the volatility in my results because of the HCV cyclicality, which we have now got all the roadmap in place for that. And therefore, we do believe this business will have to be looked at differently. Let's do the work. Let the market discover value for itself. Our job is to do our job. This is what our strategy is. This is what we'll deliver against. Let the market discover its own value. But you're saying that post demerger, the CV will get generate more cash than the PV because PV will be in a growth phase, EV. Uh, we are clear. EV. Simple mathematics. This is 80,000 crore business. We are roughly double digit EBITDA and we'll keep increasing that. And then we spend about 2-3% on CapEx. So by design, it's cash flows, positive. So And it's a ROCI, seriously strong ROCI. That combination is what we want to do it. The problem to solve in the CV side is keep continuing to invest in technology, be the technology leader, build the brand, step out volatility, stamp out volatility. I think then we are on the right track. How do you manage the cash flows for the PV business? Because so far, the cash flows of CV was uh, funding the R&D CapEx for the PV business. Now, PV would be on its own. EV will take its time to mature and be yeah. profitable. Yeah. So the 16 to 18,000 crores of uh, uh, CapEx that you have lined up for the EV business alone, and ICE will have its own uh, CapEx. How will you manage that? So two things. One is the Today, the, the PV business, the top company that will be the PV business is cash flow positive because it generates about 10% EBITDA, it spends about 6% CapEx, so about 4% is the free cash flows that it will generate, roughly, broadly speaking. So that's a, that is self-sustained, it can be on its own, way, this one. The only place where we need to invest, where we are investing planned manner proactively is EV for which funding has been secured. Then you add PLI to it, we've got the money taped up, then EV will generate its own fund. We're already a bit neutral in that business. So you're saying that the 18,000 is already tied up in, to, in form of around 6,000 odd crores from PLI and remaining your investors who have already come into it. Already EV. come in and the business will also generate its own cash flow from here on because if it's already a bit neutral, it will become a bit neutral this year and then it will start generating its positive EBITDA, it will fund itself. And later on, if you need money, there are multiple sources that are available to us, if, if at all we need the money on that. And PV itself will be able to invest if needed, because that is generating cash. There are JLR dividends coming from there, because JLR is becoming debt-free as well. So therefore, there are enough sources of funds as far as the PV business or the EV investments are required. You have guided for uh, JLR being debt-free in FI25. Um, it also has a huge uh, capex plan, which is a three and a half billion dollar yeah. uh, billion, uh, you know, pounds uh, capex. Uh, will JLR, JLR uh, you know, generate so much of cash enough for the capex and to give you dividends? Simple. JLR today is generating two billion dollars, uh, two billion pounds of cash after capex, which means that capex is about three and a half, so it's generating five and a half billion of uh, operating cash flows. So there is enough cash being generated in JLR, that's a pivot to premium luxury. That is today at eight and a half percent margin. We'll then take it up to 10 percent margin next year. Yeah, and the capex is about three and a half billion. Ten percent on a thirty billion business, three billion. So you've got enough and more cash available, uh, a bit available for that business to deliver. A bit is almost cash in that business. Then we will want to lift that EBIT margin to 15% because that's the journey towards premium luxury that we are on to. All this while delivering a ROCI of 20% plus. So it is seriously capitally prudent, premiumizing, cash accretive. And it's got a dividend policy of 25% of PAT. 25 to 40% of PAT is a, is a dividend policy. So we see no stress whatsoever as long as this particular strategy is being executed flawlessly, which we are confident of. What we have seen is that global uh, auto companies are valued at much more discount to the Indian auto companies, right? Uh, now we have a Korean giant who is coming in with an IPO and, uh, of $25 billion. Uh, while the parent may be at a discounted value, the Indian company would be uh, hovering between 18 to 19 or 20 times uh, the earnings. Do you see these restructuring exercises that you have done at your end from the CV point of view, from the PV, electric vehicle, and JLR, uh, 
changing the kind of value re-rating for Tata's PV business as a whole going forward? Because of the IPO listing? On Not that? just IPO, but also the uh, restructuring that you are doing, the work you are doing on, the, on, you know, it's also a learning phase for the market as well, if I, if I yeah. may say. I think market will find its level, investors are smarter than us, they will, they will get the right value for the business. Our job is, this is the strategy, this is what we communicate, this is what we are executing. Let the market find its own level. I'm talking from a value? shareholder point of view also. Yeah, exactly from a shareholder. We have done nothing that is shareholder unfriendly. Therefore, every one of this is giving transparency, clarity of strategy, and we are executing against the strategy that we said. Market value will discover itself through various triggers. So we are not, I am not here to drive up market value because that is not, that's not our job. That is a market to discover it will its own unlock value. value on its own. Our job is to keep simplifying, clarifying, executing. If we get these three right, I think we are on the right journey and the market will find its own uh, level for us. But we have a task on hand to ensure that we make JLR a premium luxury player and we get people to understand it in that way. That is our job number one. Job number two, we have to ensure CV becomes less volatile, strongly cash accretive and ensuring it continues to deliver profitable growth on a strong brand. That is job number two. Job number three, PV, continue to build shares, continue to drive profitability up, we are on the right track. EV, drive proactively, go to reach 30% plus penetration on EV. We, this is our task we are on to, this is what we will execute. And whatever is the value market attributes to it, the market is wiser than all of us. By when do you see the entire demerger process to be over? July next year is what we are internally targeting to get there. Obviously, the NCLT process is not under our control. But we believe that's a realistic uh, date to work off, work with. Alaji, thank you very much for joining Thanks us today. Thank you. Thank you.